Yes, Lord, thank you for your, your loving pursuit of us. And Lord, may we, may we always be a people that are found in your love, Lord God, that even when we, we turn away from it, we would recognize and turn back towards your loving arms. And God, even as we, we focus around your word for a few minutes, God, we pray that this awesome love letter that you have written to us would again just call us close, call us in to, to that love again, Lord God. Inspire us with the way forward. Speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, well, thanks, Thomas and Caitlin, uh, for leading us so well in worship. That was awesome. For those of you who I haven't met, my name's Stanley, uh, one of the pastors on the team at Coast Vineyard, and it is such a privilege to uh, be able to share with you this morning as we continue on our series, Life in Limbo. It's kind of what it uh, feels like at the moment, isn't it? Uh, if you've been tracking along with us, you'll know that a couple of weeks ago, Matt uh, spoke about finding God in the midst of change. Uh, last week, Jacinda Lilly, that is, spoke about uh, lament and just that um, ability that we have to be able to lean into God in that way with the, the griefs that we feel in the season to be able to, to lament and the gift that that is to each and every one of us. But today... We are talking about beauty from ashes, beauty from ashes, about this idea that, that God loves to bring beauty out of the ash or the broken experiences within our lives. We don't have to look very far at the moment to find a bit of brokenness, do we? <laughs> to find a bit of ash at multiple different levels, uh, that probably each and every one of us are experiencing in some way significant and difficult decisions that are needing to be made, uh, whether it be affecting us in our workplace, uh, our schools, our universities, and our families and relationships. It's even at a citywide level, at a, at a nationwide level, countries around the globe that are uh, are experiencing significant ash seasons at the moment. And so in amongst all of this, like we were talking about last week with Jacinda, this, this gift of lament, of being able to acknowledge the, the hurt, the difficulty, the challenge within the season that we find ourselves in, but also that within this there is some good news. There is some beauty that God would want to bring out both at a at a macro scale, you know, big picture, but also at a micro scale in our own personal individual lives. That he wants to find a way to bring beauty again from ash. One of the great passages of scripture that talk about this is in Isaiah 61. And uh, we've asked the, the Mokawina uh, family to read that for us, uh, Samantha, Tabo, Jason, Caleb. And uh, it, it, I, I, as they read it, I want you to be listening for the themes of restoration that come out so strongly within the words that are contained in Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, 1-3 The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Thanks, guys. So good eh? 
to bind up the broken hearted, to bring freedom to those who feel captive, joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Uh, and of course, as, as Jesus is just stepping into his public ministry here on earth in Luke 4, it's these verses out of Isaiah 61 that he references and that he reads from in the Passion Translation. I really like the language in it. After taking his turn to, uh, to do this public reading as they gathered for worship that day, it says about Jesus that he unrolled the scroll and read where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and He has anointed me to be hope for the poor, freedom for the brokenhearted, and new eyes for the blind, and to preach to prisoners, you are set free. I come to share the message of Jubilee, for the time of God's great acceptance has begun. After he read this, he rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the minister and sat down. Everyone stared at Jesus, wondering what he was about to say. Then he added, these scriptures came true today in front of you. Wow. <laughs> in a time of restriction and division, this is a message that we need to hear, isn't it? And that, isn't that great language? For the time of God's great acceptance has begun. Shall we just stop there? <laughs> God's great acceptance, whether you are rich or poor, young or old, black or white, whether you lean politically left or politically right, whether you are vaccinated or not. God's heart is one for acceptance and belonging. You are welcome in the kingdom of God. Lord, let us be a people that would live this out in our daily lives, right? That we would, we would welcome others and that we ourselves would recognize that we are welcomed into the kingdom of God. So today I, I want to talk about this idea of beauty emerging from the ashes and, and how it is that we might be able to see that within our own individual lives, but also broader than that as a, as a community. Because of course the, the ashes or the brokenness, it can look different for all of us. And I, and I want to sow some seeds of hope uh, and possibility of what God might be able to do. Yes, to this uh, season in the pandemic, uh, but also much broader than that, just to seasons in our lives where we, we walk through um, times of ash or brokenness. One of the things that I love about our community of faith is that we've got people in our midst uh, who have walked through some really difficult stuff and they have found a way to be able to find God in those seasons, through those seasons, after those seasons. And I thought that it would be worthwhile to sit down with someone who has walked through something really difficult, just to hear kind of insight of, of what that was like for them and how they found God. So I've had a conversation with Greg Owen. Now, some of you know Greg, um, but for those of you who don't, he's a, he's a great guy. Got three uh, beautiful girls, Ella, Maddie, and Ruby. But around about four years ago, um, he lost his wife, Emma Kate. Uh, Emma Kate was a, a, a fantastic wife, a great person, a great mum, and a true lover of Jesus right through to the end. And I'm, I'm sure that we, although we may not be able to grasp the, the kind of depth of it, we can begin to acknowledge the significance and the, the heartache uh, that Greg would have experienced through that time and that season. So let's go to that conversation with Greg now to explore beauty from ashes in his world. We're here, um, here talking about uh, Emma Kate passing away um, and uh, coming at four, uh, four years on November the 11th. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So it's not too far away, actually, four yeah. years. So, and we're keeping in mind that this is sort of a G-rated thing, um, how would you describe the season of losing Emma Kate? Yeah, it's um, 
four years on from now and, and reflecting on what the journey has been like and reflecting on the journey throughout that process has been has been interesting and um you know it was a, a three-year journey that that she was on in this this cancer battle that she um uh, went through over this course of time and during that time we always believed that we would see a miracle and we right. always believed that we would um yeah see we saw many little miracles along the way and we were expecting and and as time went on and and more bad news popped out and more bad news popped out i felt like there was this time where i was going through where i had to push harder with god and pray more and fast more and uh and and i felt like if i wasn't um i was compromising the 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 fact that we may not see a miracle (laughs) so i felt like in that season that i was really trying to push to see a miracle and um when it didn't happen like what we're expecting you can imagine it sort of shook me and really rocked me yeah and um i guess i've I've thought about it a bit and it's like an an analogy of a of a glass house that experiences an earthquake um you can imagine all the glass would shatter and the, the the metal framing of that glass would still be there but the glass is shattered and, and I refer to my, my ideologies and my, um, the way I, I guess I put God in a box about who in that time would have perceived God to be, that seemed to have all shattered mm-hmm. after this experience that I've gone through of, of not seeing the miracle. Yeah. And, and, and these ideology, ideologies of who I really thought, I guess, God was in that aspect was shattered. But the foundation or the frame of knowing that God is good and that God is love was still there and solid. And so I guess as a result on that, it took me on this, this journey where I would come after she'd passed away and try and pray. And I couldn't pray like I used to. I couldn't pray with words. Mm-hmm. And over a year went by and I still could not pray any words. I, 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 would, I would try and I couldn't. I couldn't bring words into prayers, mm. but I, I think what I learned through that season is that words weren't important in my prayers. Then I would often put music on and, and sit in the lounge where my girls were in bed and just feel like I was sitting in the presence of God. And mm-hmm. that peace was God just filling me up. And so I felt this, this overwhelming, um, influx of of continual peace and uh, a real blessing in that and so if I would have put words to uh, what has this season been like it's probably been like a a season of resting and um, rebuilding right so rebuilding and my understanding that God is so much more in love he's so much more about love and so much more about caring and even if we don't see the miracles that we're expecting to see even if we don't see that that we st- still know that he loves us yeah still know that he is good through all of that so talking today um about isaiah 61 this concept of sort of you know beauty from ashes the 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 good stuff coming out of really difficult um times in our lives so what would you what would you see as being that some of that beauty um that has come out for you Mm. yeah there there has been a lot of beauty through through all of this um i mean look particularly around people and my family has been a big part to play through all of this where they've been so supportive but just seeing this these relationships flourish with my girls and 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 their grandparents and and families just grown amazingly um but I'd say a big part also would be friendships and right. friendships have grown more so than anything. I would say, um, I feel richer than I've ever felt with friendships and with connections with people. Um, look, throughout our journey that we went through friends were amazing. They came together and, and gave so much, um, and of their time and their energy and, and prayers and, you know, but, it didn't just stop there it's carried on through 
Yeah, yeah. And um, as a result of that, it's feel like, you know, I lost my best friend, but I've managed to build many good, good friends, not Facebook like friends, yeah. but, <laughs> you know, friends that, that actually really input into your life and, and I input into theirs and challenge you and, and, you know, you, you grow together. So in various forms and uh, friends within work environment, friends within, um, you know, sports environment and, and social, you know, a whole mixture of different friends that have really come together and uh, or come into my world and to my girl's world as well, which has been a real blessing. Um, so yeah, family would be one, friends would be another. But come back to this family aspect, I'd say, I've got three daughters, Madison and Ella, that are going on 13 into this year, and Ruby, who's nine, and um, their love for me would be like a real beauty that has come through all of this. Um, often, when you've when you've got um, two parents, your your children's love is is pushed split between two in a way, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and sometimes with, with the mother, it's probably mothers are a bit more affectionate with, with children. So I feel like I've received all of what they had there is sort of coming all onto me. So it's like this, this, this overflowing love. And as you know, Stan, that um, Emma Kate was somebody that really demonstrated love and she loved people and she, yeah, she, yeah. she role modeled that to my girls so well as they were growing up, she would always be, preparing meals for people or mm -hmm. visiting people or always speaking good of people and and that rubbed off onto my girls whether they know it or not it rubbed off onto them and I can see that now in the way that they are with their friends or they are with me and they look out for me and they, you know that's just there's this love that I feel that is um so rich yeah, that I'm yeah. very blessed to be able to have um these girls I mean boys might not quite be the same but <laughs> so they, there's a special daughter daddy relationship which um which I'm feeling yeah really blessed so I guess that that would be a big big beauty that I've seen yeah. for uh, um as a result of what went on there that's awesome man to others you know others that might be experiencing um, some sort of kind of brokenness or ash kind of experience in their lives, um, be it of this nature or, or something completely different. Any, any particular sort of things that you would encourage them in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think sometimes when you're going through the journey and you're going through the battles, it's sometimes hard to be able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when you're going through that, it's it's hard to even know, is God actually here with me? Um, but to realize that even the days that we don't feel God's presence, to know that he is there and that he is walking this journey through us. And um, no matter what happens, that we can trust in him, that his plan is, is greater than our plans. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I think... A really great book, um, God on Mute by Peter Gregg. Mm. And, and he speaks about in there. And I read this after Emma Kate passed away. And it was such a, uh, it was a real healing book. It was actually a really worthwhile book to read. Um, but in there, he spoke a little bit about having um, faith in faith. You know, sometimes we can have faith that our faith is, is enough faith to have faith to see that miracle, as opposed to actually have faith um, where you'd say, God, I trust in you and I'm believing for a miracle, but mm. if I don't see that miracle, I trust in you that your ways are greater. And, and, you know, when I was going through this battle, I never wanted to go to the extent of saying if, if she didn't survive, I didn't want to think that because thinking maybe it's affecting my faith. And if my faith is a little bit lower then the miracle may not happen, <laughs> but um, just really having that aspect of saying, God, I trust in you. Yeah. You know what's going to happen. And and I just choose that to, to believe that your plans are greater. Yeah. So awesome. Well, Greg, thank you so much. Um, there's lots more that we could talk about and difficult to um sort of sum up 
uh, a season that has been so significant in just a few short minutes. But thanks so much for just sharing heart. And, and, and as you say, Emma Kate did, she loved really well, you know, and I've often reflected on, on just the, uh, the way in which you have carried on her legacy of that as well. And, uh, you know, I know that she'd be incredibly proud of you, proud of the way that you're living your life. Thanks for always, you know, just turning towards God um, in, the, in the thick and the thin when it's easy and when it's definitely not. So thanks, man. Really appreciate you sharing your heart, eh? Thanks, Dan. No, that's great. Pleasure. Thanks so much, Greg. Thanks for your vulnerability uh, and sharing your journey with us and such great insight and reflections eh, on a truly difficult uh, season. So we want to explore this a little bit now about how to see beauty come out of the ashes. And I want to be careful not to just kind of give a, uh, a three-step quick fix to your brokenness um, because it's so much more nuanced and difficult than that. Instead, I just want to give some, some simple ideas of things that are good for us to focus on in this season. Focus on and fight for. First of these is... And really, I'm not going to speak too much about it because we explored it last week and I'd really encourage you to listen to the message from Jacinda on lament, if you haven't already. But it's to surrender our ash to a loving God. In order for us to move forward, there has to be this first and foremost, just surrendering, offering up that brokenness, that difficulty, that ash to God. And as we just read from Isaiah 61, God's promise to us to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve. Before we can move forward, we've got to find a way to surrender that brokenness to God. What is it for you that you need to surrender? Within the season, within the ash that you recognize, what do you need to surrender to God? It's outside of your control. What do you need to surrender? Next simple thought is, and I think it's actually really important in this season, is to keep the main thing the main thing. Man, there is so much that we can focus on and be fighting for or about uh, in this season, isn't there? It's so crucial for us to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back keeping the main thing the main thing. I love how the message puts Philippians 3 verse 13. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. God is beckoning us on towards Jesus. That's great language, isn't it? And, and really it's, it, it raises the question for us that, in the things that we are focusing in on at the moment, are they leading us toward Jesus? The things that we're fighting about or fighting for, are they helping to lead us and others toward Jesus? What's leading you towards Jesus at the moment? Galatians 6, 9 and 10, let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers, keeping the main thing, the main thing, loving Jesus, heading towards Jesus and doing good or loving other people. Next simple thought. Learn to see the opportunity that ashes bring. Uh, learn a new word uh, over the last couple of weeks, just as I've been thinking about this, about the humble pine cone. Ah, happened to have a pine cone just here. Serotini. Serotini is the word. Uh, in the comments below, you're welcome to say if you have ever heard of that word before. I had not. Definition, the retention of seeds in pods or cones on a tree often for many years, until a disaster, most commonly the heat of a fire, causes their release. After fire, the seeds fall on ground fertilized by ash in a site cleared 
of competitors. How apt is that a picture of the season that we find ourselves in at the moment? And, uh, and as you can see from this little video that I've just put up now, if you put this humble little pine cone into an oven, heat it up, you'll see that it gradually expands. And as it expands, it gives uh, ability for the seeds that are contained within the cone to be released. And because of the nutrients that are released from the ash from the tree that's just been burnt, then it's able to have new growth, beauty from ashes. Like with the pine cone, there are opportunities that present themselves in our own lives when disaster strikes. And really the, the question that I want to pose on this is, you know, what are the seeds? What, what, what seeds might come? What beauty might come? What's possible from the ash that we see at the moment? As difficult as it is, this season presents us with opportunities, as does any season where there is brokenness that is exposed within our lives. I, I wonder what it is that this season will teach us individually and as the body of Christ. What are the seeds? What's the beauty that would come out of this season? What about the beauty of unity in a time of division? Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Unity in a time of division. What about the opportunity of learning to love the other. No matter where you land and I land on particular key topics that we've got at the moment that affect our lives, that affect the way that we, that we do life, no matter where we land, there will be people who think differently to you and me. Not bad people, not people who are lacking in intelligence, just people, people like you and me. And we have this massive opportunity here to be light posts in our community of, of how we treat people who land on different opinions to us with love and respect and dignity and honour. Let those be the things that would affect the way that we interact with others at the moment. What about the beauty of not living out of fear? There is so much fear that is driving a lot of decision making at the moment. But, but fear is not a good place to make wise decisions from. But as Christians, if you're a Christian watching this here, we can invite the peace of God to rule and reign in our hearts so that no matter what is going on around us, we can still be in that place of peace. And if you're not a Christian here and you're watching this, that invitation is for you as well to step in to that place of peace, to invite God into your very heart. What about the beauty of a freedom that's not externally based? You know, the Apostle Paul, who wrote so much of the New Testament, wrote some of his best stuff while he was in prison showing us, demonstrating to us that freedom is not and does not need to be dictated to us by what's going on on the outside, on the external. It's something that is within. No matter what mandates get made, no matter what rules and regulations take place, we can still walk in the freedom of Christ internally. Is it possible that there is an opening receptiveness to the kingdom of God in this season like we have not seen for many, many, many years. Is that one of the beauties that could come out of the season of ash? You know, let's be a people who will be looking for that beauty. Yes, acknowledging the difficulty, the hurt, the ash, surrendering it to God, 
fighting to keep the main thing the main thing, but also looking for the beauty that would come, the opportunity that there is within that season of ash. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. We're going to wrap up um, this morning the same way that we did last week by putting a, a slide up with some reflection questions and statements. And they are there to just help you to engage with God, to just have some time to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to lead and speak to you about this topic. About the ash that you recognize and see and also about the beauty that may come. So you're welcome to do this individually or you may want to do it with the, the people around you within, within your bubble. And of course, you don't need to keep it limited to the five minutes or so that we've allowed within the service this morning. You're, you're free, obviously, to, to extend, extend out that time. But I'm just going to pray, then I'll leave you to it, and you can have that time to be able to reflect. Father, we thank you that you are good. And that God, we don't pretend that brokenness and hurt and difficulty is not going on right now but yet we choose to trust Lord that there is beauty that can come out of this season let us be a people who would seek you for that beauty Lord who would share that beauty around us with the people that we interact with and let it be the thing that dominates our hearts as we walk forward Lord so we just invite you to come these next few minutes. Come and speak to us. Lead us, Holy Spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, friends. We'll see you again real soon.